So now we come to the effects of social welfare policies at the local or at the individual level. So to understand the impact of social welfare policies and social control at the individual level, we have to distinguish between two types of social control. Directly coercive social control and subtly coercive social control. The directly coercive social control is where a person's freedom is deliberately and clearly reduced. Subtly coercive social control is where people are encouraged, meaning thereby that they are gradually moved or promoted or given incentives to fit in the established social roles and to suppress their desires. So, the directly coercive social control is gradually become rarer, but it is still present in many areas. So, in this module, we will discuss how directly coercive social control is linked with the individual level social welfare policies. So, one of the most clear examples of directly coercive social well, uh, control is is in mental asylums, long-stay hospitals, and jails. Here, the administrators, the managers have total control over the uh, inmates, and they think that they know better than their inmates, and they think that at least they, the, the average uh, manager thinks that uh, they, have, they don't have many rights. So in mental asylums, for example, who are the people who are in mental asylums? Uh, the inmates are either mad, insane, lunatics. But as we have gradually in, uh, you know, in, uh, learned more about psychology and there are more improvements and psycho uh, psychological uh, experiments, we have learned that many of these lunatics and insane are mad but not actually mad or lunatics or insane. So they could have been cured and they have little small problems, maybe depression or some other things, which could have been controlled by medicine or by therapy or other areas, but they were put uh, in these mental assignments for long-term basis, which uh, rather than healing them, uh, made their problems worse. So before 19th centuries, these kind of people were taken, over, uh, taken uh, care by families. Later on, there were uh, state houses where like in many mental asylums, asylums, people were changed to their beds, to their uh, uh, to anything. Uh, they were tortured and they were starved to death if they didn't behave, meaning thereby if they didn't accept what the managers were saying. Um, if you have time, do see uh, the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which was based on a book by Ken Casey. And it's a very good movie and it's based on uh, on the life in mental asylum and how a manager, which is a nurse, tries to break the wheel of every patient and tries to uh, not to heal these patients, but to control and sub, uh, make them submissive uh, to where various forms of torture and um, other uh, ways. Long-stay hospitals are, again, similarly problematic uh, to a lesser level than asylums, but they, again, uh, managers think that long-stay uh, patients don't have many rights and total submission is what is required. Um, in jails, again, yes, in jails, people, uh, people go to jails because they commit crimes, but they still have some rights. Uh, although in over uh, justice system in Pakistan, uh, many innocents also go to jail. Uh, so we have to be more careful about the rights of those those in jails. Uh, but what happens is jails is, uh, you know, torture, bad food, extremely dirty environment, no sun for number of days or even weeks and no activity. So all these things are there, overcrowded jails. So, which again increase the power of the um, managers and administrators to do whatever they like. Um, gradually things are getting better, but still, uh, uh, at least in developing countries, uh, the inmates in these three uh, uh, realms face problems. Uh, in the 
most countries, uh, the coercive control is more seen uh, not in these uh, different institutions, but in the form of restrictions on behavior uh, or means testing uh, if you apply for uh, social welfare benefits. Since the 1980s, um, uh, there is the trend uh, not to increase the uh, benefits, but to decrease the benefits and try to eliminate fraud, fake beneficiaries and laziness. So actually the laziness is uh, not, uh, is there, but it's not as prevalent at it's, as it is talked about. And in, on the basis of this fraud and laziness, more and more people are restricted from taking uh, the social welfare benefits. And if they want to take benefits, they have to go through coercive measures. For example, uh, money is not given and in the U.S. food stamps are given, which, which leads to loss of dignity for people. So when they go to a supermarket and pay through food stamps, everybody knows that they are poor. Then there is drug testing. So... If you go for a social welfare policy, each time you go there, you are tested for drugs, uh, which means that if you take drugs, you are not giving social benefits. Then there are time-bound benefits. So uh, you are given benefits for six months or a year after lose, you lose the job, then you are not given that. Uh, then you have don't have a choice of training and work. So uh, if you want to do one type of training or you want a certain kind of job, you are not allowed to do that. You have to go for the training or the job which is available or which is, which is uh, ordered by the administrator. Then again, there are stringent tests for disability. Uh, and if you have a deviant behavior, if you are arrested for something, even for a tra traffic violation, uh, all your benefits, social benefits are gone. So this is one of the coercive types of uh, social control that is uh, now seen in the more advanced countries. Thank you.